sky is falling, Lisa Branch. Day, the Harvard psychiatry researchers pushed the participants to their mental limits. It was for the good of all humanity. The grueling task? To play Tetris. Can you believe that we missed an opportunity to play a video game for pay? But wait until you hear about the side effects. Fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests. If it has been a few years since you have thought about the game of Tetris, let me refresh your memories. It's a little video game in which four different shapes fall from the top of the screen and the player can move them or rotate them until they hit the bottom of the screen. The <coughs> aim of the game is to get as many of these bars across the bottom of the screen which disappear and to have a high score because of that. It may sound simple, but it can be surprisingly addictive. For days after the study, some participants literally couldn't stop dreaming about shapes falling from the sky. Others couldn't stop seeing shapes in their real lives, even in their waking hours. They would walk by a building and they would see if the bricks could maybe be rotated, or they'd look to the skyline and see if the Calvary Tower might fit nicely in with the bow tower. Gamers soon took to calling this bizarre condition the Tetris Effect. According to researcher and author Sean Acor in his book, The Happiness Advantage, Consistent game playing changes the wiring of our brain and creates new neural pathways. It's these pathways that warp the way in which the players would see real life situations. This is great news if those students were training for a Tetris tournament, but let's face it, I don't know of any jobs that reward obsessive Tetris playing to you. Of course, the Tetris effect isn't just about video games. It's a metaphor for the way in which we see the world around us. We all know someone who is stuck in some form of the Tetris effect, someone who is unable to break a pattern of thinking or behaving. Often this pattern can be negative. We all have a friend who can walk into any room and find the one thing to complain about. You know the type. Maybe, like me, you're one of them. These people aren't trying to be difficult or grumpy. They just have a really, are outstanding at scanning their environments and picking up on the negatives because of years of training and practice. Society actually encourages this type of training. In the work world, are we not rewarded for seeing problems that need solving, numbers that need recalculating, injustices that need writing, Consider tax accountants. They spend their days scanning forms, looking for errors and discrepancies. Like the Tetris players, who saw blocks falling everywhere, soon the accountants would start seeing errors and discrepancies beyond their computer screen. At work, they would enter into a peer review and they would comment on the faults of their team members instead of their strengths. At home, when their child came back with a report card, they would see the C's and not the A's. At the restaurant, they would comment that the potatoes were underdone, even though the steak was perfectly cooked. Constantly scanning the world for negatives comes at a great cost. It undercuts our creativity. It raises our stress levels. It lowers our motivation and ability to accomplish goals. Ultimately, a negative Tetris effect has, is a thought pattern that decreases our overall success in life. The good news is that we can train our brain for the good things in life, to see more possibility, to feel more energy, and to succeed at higher levels. We would benefit immediately from greater happiness, gratitude, and optimism. 
Just like it takes days of concentrated practice to master a video game, training your brain to focus on the positive things in life will take practice too. The best and easiest way is to start making a daily list of the good things that happen in your job, your family, and your life. Now this may sound quite simple, and it really is. But when you write down a list of three good things, your brain is forced to scan the last 24 hours looking for potential positives. Something that made you laugh. Perhaps beauty outside that is appreciated. A conversation that connected. In just five minutes a day, this trains the brain to become more skilled at noticing and focusing on the positives. It doesn't matter when or how, you could take a pen and paper at your night table and do it before bed. If you're working at the computer a lot, you can set an alert for 10 o'clock in the morning and type in your items. One CEO decided to take this activity home to his children and do it around the dinner table. One particularly stressful day, he did not feel like doing this exercise at all. And his children refused to eat their dinner until he thought of three good things despite his difficult day. This exercise has staying power. Three years ago, I read a book by author Anne Voskamp called 1,000 Gifts and was challenged to do as Anne had done and come up with a list of 1,000 things, people, moments, anything that I wanted to classify as a gift. If you do the quick math, and I did three a day, it would take me 11 months to complete my list of 1,000. Truth be told, I'm still in the 700s, but the effects on my daily life are evident. Even if I don't write them all down, I do notice them. When we get the unexpected Calgary snowfall and it's cold and the roads are slow going, I now notice how the snow glistens like diamonds in the morning sunlight. Number 734 on my list was when my daughter vomited all over the floor and I was grateful that it had been the bathroom tile and not the bedroom carpet. <laughs> when we train our brains to adopt a positive Tetris effect, we're improving our chances at happiness, gratitude, and optimism. It's a new level. The blocks are set and are starting to fall. How will you choose to see them?